I think that uh, the most important thing from any uh, any applicant's point of view, or any re new registry's point of view, let's say that way. So once you're given a new registry, that, that registry should be serving users. So if you take a user-centered model from day one, and that's certainly how we approach it, uh, sport is one of those um, uh, unique things, like music transcends borders, transcends cultures, languages. It's not relevant uh, to that extent. But it is relevant uh, from a language and cultural point of view if you're, uh, you speak Arabic or you speak uh, uh, Devangali in India or you speak uh, you know, in Russian and you use Cyrillic characters. So for us, one of the most important parts, and, and for anyone from my camp quite familiar with my case, I've been waving the flag for a long time, it's important <coughs> to allow uh, a multi-script application so that we can allow those users in those cultures and in those countries to be able to use the internet in their own language. So for our, from our point of view, a user-centric internet is really important, and then we couple that with the IDN example. Um, the other el element of sport that's um, I think very uh, interesting, and probably there's many uh, sectors like this. It's uh, sport lives in the dark ages. You know, the guys who are the administrators of sport are usually the guys who kind of rose up, rose up, and whoever had the most time became the secretary general. You know, and he keeps getting reelected because nobody else wants to dedicate that kind of time. Um, so they're they're dealing in a world that is uh, well, almost called pre-internet. They don't understand the dynamics of the internet and what it can mean to them from an organization administration point of view just within their own organization, let alone reaching out and connecting with more fans uh, in next generations. There are over 100 federations of sport today, so it incorporates every sport that you know, but it also incorporates sports that you would never even think about, like canoe water polo. Uh, it exists. Uh, they get in canoes and they... My kid's going to get a scholarship for that, actually. That, <laughs> so Jamie, see, he's one step ahead. Um, but at the end of the day, there are a lot of sports out there that we've never heard of, and they have very little exposure. And the internet can give them more exposure, can build a fan base, build more participation. So that's our, our, our view is really to try to uh, integrate, uh, to bring, bring sport from, I'll call it the 19th century to the 21st century, and make a sport-centric model. So that will include, or a user-centric model. So that will include things as a, so, uh, a social media component, so that um, teams, as soon as they get a dot sport domain name, automatically will have a social media, which we call life.sport. And in that way, be able to communicate and integrate uh, the fans and the parents and the kids and everybody around one small social media, social media platform. And an example of that, my great nephew, Reese White, nine years old, uh, plays for the Comox Chiefs out in Canada. And uh, there must be, you know, like 12 kids on that team, so 12 sets of parents, a few grandparents, a couple of coaches, all in, maybe, you know, uh, 40 people in that social, social network. But if you've got millions and millions and millions of those, and they can all interact on one platform, that starts to create something interesting.